in our gospel reading this evening, which I just read, we are treated to some very special words. They're the first words of Jesus' public ministry, at least uh, as recorded by Luke. And I think that makes these words very important to understanding who Jesus is and exactly what he's up to. I guess I would say I think these words are kind of Jesus' inaugural address. Now, we know American presidents use inaugural addresses to outline their priorities for the time that they're going to be in office. And great inaugural addresses rise above simply naming priorities and cast a vision for what our country can be and what our country should be. So what kind of vision do we hear in Jesus' address? It's the announcement of a mission. It's a description of the kingdom of God. It is a promise of God's aid and presence. And he summarizes all of that and much more in two simple words. Good news. This is what he said, reading from Isaiah, actually. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. It's pretty great news, isn't it? It's really great news. But it's only good news if you're willing to admit what's hard in your life. If you're willing to admit what's lacking in your life, what is difficult in your life. Because it's not good news in general, is it? He said, I have good news for the poor. I have release for those who are captive. I have sight for those who are blind. Freedom for those who are oppressed. Jesus is, offers God's words of comfort, but those words only mean something to those who are living with discomfort. How do you think most people hear those words today? We spend so much time acting as if we've got everything together. We spend so much money trying to look better, trying to get fitter, trying to appear younger. We put so much pressure on ourselves. And our culture puts pressure on us to not need anything or anyone else, to be our own person. And it makes me wonder if Jesus' message really has much value or can even be heard by people today. Except for one thing. There's one thing about that that gives me hope. And that's this. The stories that we tell ourselves about being perfect. The commercials we pay attention to telling us that we really can have it all. The ads that promise us if we just purchase this product, we'll never feel insecure again. They're all false. All of that stuff is false. And you know it. Deep down, you know it. So while Jesus' message to us this evening is good news, in order for us to hear it that way, it must first strike us as bad news. The bad news that we're not who we want to be. The bad news that we're not who we can be. That we're not who we should be. And not only are we not who we should be, we we never will be. We never will be. 
Jesus comes bearing good news to those in need. And if we're not willing to see and admit our need, there's nothing that he can do for us. But when we can do that, when we can admit our need, when we can admit our shortcomings, when we can be honest about our life, about our hurts and our fears and our longings, three things will happen. I think the first thing that will happen is we'll just feel an immense freedom from finally admitting the truth. Bad news, when it's true, is better than a pretty lie. Second of all, we will receive the help and comfort that God offers us. Release, sight, healing, freedom. And third, we'll realize that we don't simply receive help and comfort. But God, through his Son, invites us to offer that same good news to others. In other words, we're not just simply being invited to hear the good news. We're being invited to be good news. Family, that's what the body of Christ is. That's what a community of faith is. We are God's hands delivering the promise of good news to all who are in need. So if those around us are afraid, we should invite them here to find courage. If they're lonely, we should invite them here to find a family. If they are ill, we should invite them to allow us to care for them. If they feel isolated, we should visit them. If they are discouraged, we should gather together to bring them hope. As a family of faith here at St. Paul's Lutheran Church, we need to spend a little more time, I think, thinking about how Jesus' words are addressing us, how they are calling us, how they are inviting us to be the body of Christ as we live out his good news and extend it to everybody that we meet. But as we do those things, they're very important to do. But as we do them, we dare never forget that God doesn't come for the perfect. He comes for the imperfect. Not for the healthy, but for the sick. Not for the righteous, but for the unrighteous. Not for the strong, but for the weak. I guess what I'm saying is, God comes for us. And for that, we can and should be most thankful. Amen.